today we're going to be making these. These Bluetooth devices cost the same as a burger and a coffee to make. What do they do? Well, if you've got a really cheap pair of headphones um, and you want to make them Bluetooth, then these devices will make them Bluetooth. Um, but also, if you have a really um, classic pair of old headphones that you really like, um, but they're not Bluetooth, then of course these devices will make them Bluetooth. If you've got an amp or any other audio device um, that isn't Bluetooth and you've got one of these leads, then you can connect it to your Bluetooth device here and it will make them Bluetooth. Before I show you guys how to make them, I'm just going to show you guys a few examples of them working. Obviously I'm not going to plug headphones into them because that would be useless because you guys can't hear what's going on. That's probably what I'll be using them for anyways, but I'll show you some other ways you can use your Bluetooth device. I've got this amp but it's not Bluetooth. Well it is Bluetooth now with this device I've made. Um, our little Bluetooth thing, let me just plug it in. Here you go. Ow. There we go. Play. <laughs> We've got an ancient amp and some speakers that we use for our keyboard. It's plugged into our keyboard here. I'm just going to take it out and put it into one of the little Bluetooth devices we've made. I'm going to use our snare to turn it. And I'm just going to play something that I've knocked up on Gar GarageBand on our app. That's so cool. And our car stereo isn't Bluetooth, and so you have to connect your phone or your iPad um, via this little thing but obviously the new ones my new ipad and phone don't have the same connector anymore you've got to buy those special ones but luckily we have our little devices so we can connect bluetooth so i'm going to lose this one and i've just paired it to my little ipad there we go and then i'm going to play and we have vibes in the car once again list i could have got these items a little bit cheaper elsewhere but i just got a two times double a battery holder for 49 pence um three pounds for a bluetooth module this isn't the exact bluetooth module that we got but you can see it is relatively cheap as well and it has a few extra parts onto it you'll also notice it has different legs and these look a lot easier to solder to as you'll see later on in the video we had a bit of a struggle soldering all the parts onto our bluetooth module 69 pence for a step up voltage regulator these are the voltage regulators that we used. Um, you don't have to get the exact ones, maybe you might find a better deal, um, but anything that can get you into the correct voltage range will do. 69 pence again for a switch and 72 pence for a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack socket. And of course an old deck of cards, but that was free. Um, and this all totaled to five pounds and 59 pence. And just for comparison, a Starbucks flat white at the moment in the UK costs two pounds 50 and a Big Mac costs three pounds and nine pence. And I've just realized that a Starbucks flat white and a Big Mac adds up exactly to our total of these items, which is pretty cool, I didn't realize. The first thing we did was get our old deck of cards, put it on some blue tag, and then I just punched a hole in it, as central as possible, and just towards one side. Hopefully you can see the hole there. And I just thought I'd show you guys, I just took apart our card box and hopefully you can see the two holes there. And this hole is for our socket and I didn't have any proper equipment um, to get the correct size. So I just widened the hole with different objects increasing in size every time to expand it to the size I needed. And the last um, object of course is this pencil. And this is about the right size for our socket, you can see hopefully it fits. So I'll just sh show you what I did. And I did this to both holes on either side of our card box. Now it's time for the final hole that our switch will go in. Now I have some blue tack behind the box so I don't stab my hand and I plan to put my switch in the middle of the N and U of IN and USA on my card box. But I made an awful mess and the hole was completely off centre. Now to widen the hole I just used the same method as before, putting in objects slightly bigger than the last till the hole was roughly the correct size. 
and hopefully you can see that now our switch fits in the hole. Now for the electronics. Here's the plan, so we've got our battery and we've got the positive going through our switch and into our step up just to step up the voltage and um, then we've got that going into our Bluetooth board and then the same on the other side of the battery on the negative side so it's going through the step up and then into our um, ground of our Bluetooth board and then we've just connected up our socket here so we've just got our left and right and ground into our Bluetooth board. I've never used this switch before so we're going to figure out how it works. I have my multimeter here and then I've just put it onto this diode. I'm not sure this is the best way to measure but hopefully it'll work. So at the moment these two probes aren't connected and we're showing one and then when we connect them on our multimeter we show a very low number 0.02 um, not really one, very low. If I connect these two outer legs of our switch, oh, whoops, there we go, our multimeter reads one, which means these two outer legs aren't connected. Um, so let's try these two legs, the middle and the left leg. And that's showing a very low number, which means they're connected. Let's try the other two, so it's the middle and the right, and it's showing one, which means that they aren't connected. So Let's see if we what happens if we switch it, flick our switch the other way. Okay, let's measure the two outer legs. And they're still showing one, which means that they're still not connected. So whichever direction the switch is, these two outer legs are never going to be connected. Let's try these two. Now these were connected before, now it's showing one, and which means now they're not connected. Let's try the other two. Now it looks like they are connected. So when the switch is pointing this direction, um, these two legs are connected, and then obviously these two legs aren't. So then when I flick it the other way, then these two legs are now connected, and then these two legs aren't. On our little 3.5mm um, jack, you can hopefully see we have little three sections, this metal bit split into three. And so this is usually ground. We've just drawn um, a diagram over here. So you can see that this bottom part is usually ground. Then the little section up, the middle, is connected to the right, and that is the right audio signal. And then the tip is the left, and that's just the left audio signal. And so we've connected it into our little socket here, and we have see that has three legs, one for each section of our jack but I don't know which is which, and I suspect this is ground, but I don't know which is left and which is right, and it doesn't really matter if that gets mixed up, but I just want it to be perfect, so let's find out. I've got our uh, multimeter on here, if I just connect it to here, so I think this is ground, so if I connect the other side to the ground of our jack, it should, yep, it says that it's connected because it's um, low, and then if I test another section, you can see that's not connected, so it's definitely the bottom, and this is definitely ground. So I'll just do a little G here. Yeah. Okay, now let's test these two legs. So I'm going to test the next one here. Let's see if I can just hook that in. There we go. And then we have our two sections here. So I'm going to choose this section. So that's not connected. So it must be this middle one. That is low. So that means that that is definitely connected. And this one, middle, is the right. So this leg must be connected to the right. What is it going to say? Yep. And finally, I expect this to be left. So if we just connect that there and then connect it to the tip, which is left. You can see that's low there, so that means that's definitely connected, and if we just test the other two sections, not connected, not connected, tip, connected. So I'll just do a little L. There we go. We've cut and stripped some wire to connect to our audio socket. Okay, so that's the soldering done, and I've just tinned the ends of these three wires, and now that needs to be connected here on our Bluetooth module. The jack's now soldered to our board. I'm now going to connect the positive of our battery pack to our switch. We're now going to connect this to the middle contact of our switch. So we've got the positive of our battery going through our switch, and then we've also got our negative of our battery, and we just need to connect that to our voltage um, step up regulator so there's our voltage regulator ready to test i've just got my brother here hello and he's just holding um well he's just measuring the voltage coming out here and this is displaying here and we can see it's 12.42 volts now our bluetooth board takes between 
three and a half and five volts. So I just need to adjust this here so that we can get um, about, I'm going to say four volts coming out. So let's just adjust that. Go, it's going down. Okay, that's five volts. Almost go up a little bit. That's about four volts. So we're now stepping up our voltage um, to about four volts, and we now need to connect that up to our Bluetooth board just here. Time for our first test. So here I've just plugged, instead of plugging in my some headphones and just telling you guys to trust me and for me just to hearing it, I've just plugged in our um, mini amp here so then you guys can hear it. And I've made this, this mini amp in another video, so if you wanted to go check that out then feel free to. Um, so let's test it out. So I'm going to turn on our mini amp and then turn on, turn to switch, flick the switch here. Okay. Oh, and our little blue lights come on, meaning it's working. And then on our phone, we've got Bluetooth and settings and we can see here um, our Bluetooth module. So we'll just click on that to connect. Bluetooth connected. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Okay, um, that's my dog. Okay, let's go on to Music Practice Toolkit. This is actually an app that we've developed. Um, so let's just play this. This app is quite good for um, practicing uh, music if you're a musician. Um, and you can see it's working. So I'm just gonna pause that. And now it's time to put it in the box. I'm just figuring out the internal layout. So I've just blue tacked um, our step up voltage regulator to the back of our Bluetooth module board here. And then if I just put that there, it seems to roughly line up our socket with the little hole that we put in our box for. And then here, is our switch and that sort of will go here and then we have our battery still to put in and that looks like I think we're just going to take up about roughly half of the box our first sort of fit just playing around so we can just flick the switch here I'm not sure if oh yeah it's flashing in there okay so I put everything into our into our box that's so cool so we have our deck of cards and we've got our Thing. That's a really cool thing to own. I might want to change a few bits, like I might want to strengthen it a bit, but I mean, well, that's pretty neat. Okay, so should we, let's, well, let's test it out. So I'm going to plug it in. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's turn on our amp. Oh, if I can turn it on. Okay, let's just quickly flick it on. There we go. Hopefully it should turn on. Oh, there's a blue light there. So I might put a little window in so we can see that. Um, okay, let's see if it's, see if it works. I'm not sure if you can hear that. Oh! <laughs> Obviously you can connect your headphones into it. You can just have it in your pocket and get it out and, be, and get Bluetooth headphones. Um, turn it on. That'll be, yeah, that'll be really cool as um, an ordinary amp to a Bluetooth amp. And I'm really pleased with how that turned out because it actually does, does look really cool as well. I've got my sisters ready um, to give with her and this is running off normal batteries. Um, and I'm going to do try do mine out of these tins, um, smint tins, and this is just a prototype, but I just tried to drill two holes here. You can see that they've got a good hole and a really bad one. What happened with this one is we did um, a perfect hole and looked great, but then it was too small, too tight to fit, so we tried to widen it with um, the same drill bit as this, and it just mangled up our tin really badly unfortunately. Once I do this tin, hopefully it will look perfect, um, but I don't think you'll see this when the socket's on. I'm going to be using LiPo batteries and I got um, a few batteries and a charger a while ago, but I don't remember where I got them from or how much they were, but I've just done a quick search and you can see you can get something similar here for about 11 99 and you may be able to find a better deal. My batteries came with this little lead here that connects into your charger so that you can charge your battery. So I was going to sacrifice that, cut it off just here and then connect those two wires to my Bluetooth board. But I found we had a packet of these lying around, a packet there, um, and so I'm going to use these instead. Um, but it's up to you what you want to do. Obviously you can see they have the same end here so you can connect them like that. 
but um, these two ends are ready to solder in. Same circuit as before, um, a little bit simpler even since we don't even have our voltage regulator, since this is providing the correct voltage for us. I had a devil of a time connecting um, our socket up here, because um, I think I put too much solder on one of them and it just kept overflowing. It just, it was very tricky, but if you're having the same problem, stick with it because it ended up going okay. So let's test it out. I'll just switch on our Bluetooth and our amp. Okay, blue light. I'm just gonna... Okay, now I'll play just some tunes. This is just coming from GarageBand. So we can hear that it works, which is very pleasing. With this being a LiPo battery, I just put some glue gun on some of the exposed metal parts on our circuit, like here. Um, and here and here on our Bluetooth board, just because if there was some form of short circuit, um, then of course our battery would end up getting extremely hot and could explode, um, which of course is very dangerous. And that's why I didn't use LiPo batteries in my sister's little Bluetooth um, device, and hers just takes regular batteries. This is the rough layout, so I'm going to see if I can try to do our first fit. I've pushed this through here and I'm going to put the collar on. It hasn't hidden the bad hole as much as I wanted, but it's okay. Now we just need to attach this. Prototype complete, let's test it out. I've already got um, something playing into it now. Oh, that's so cute. I'm gonna turn it off. I've been using these all week and the batteries are yet to run out and it's still going strong. I really hope you liked this video and if you did, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a good day. Bye.